Lady Liberty stands tall in New York Harbor. She represents the opportunities and the freedom upon which this country was founded. It is the men and women of our armed services who protect those liberties granted each and every American citizen. It is for this day and this day only that our country's military divides. For the sake of sport, forced to choose a side. Beat Army, sir. Beat Army, sir. Rivals on the field of play, comrades in arms on the field of battle. In 1890, on the bank of the Hudson River at West Point, this century-old football tradition began when Cadet Dennis Mahan Mikey got the Naval Academy to issue a challenge. Knowing that, no formal challenge went unanswered by the Military Academy. Army football would be born. And in the first game ever, experienced Navy was the victor, 24-0. Soon thereafter, the greatest rivalry in sports had begun. A half century later, Army would become a national football powerhouse behind legendary coach Red Blake, who won national titles with Mr. Inside Doc Blanchard and Mr. Outside Glenn Davis. The Naval Academy has had its share of collegiate glory also, including heroes Joe Bellino and quarterback great, unflappable Roger Staubach. For most of these young men, the gridiron is their first field of battle where their leadership is tested. Army, Navy, where the glory is in the competition and duty, honor, and country collide. Moments ago, the march on. First the Corps of Cadets, then the Brigade of Midshipmen. From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to LA There's pride in every American heart and it's time we stand and say That I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt Moments ago, the U.S. Naval Academy Men's and Women's Glee Club under the direction of Dr. Jim Turk, our national anthem.
welcome you to the Home Depot presentation of college football on CBS. Today from the city of Baltimore, the Army against the Navy. And as part of the weekend spectacle involving these two teams, the annual prisoner exchange. Followed by the arrival of the Golden Knights. College football on CBS, the Black Knights of Army against the Midshipmen of Navy. Meeting in Baltimore, the 101st get-together between these two teams who first collided on the gridiron in 1890. Blackledge, we welcome you to one of those sporting events that makes life in this country so special, the much-anticipated meeting between Army and Navy. You know the old cliche about throw out the records when these two teams get together? We're going to do that. They are a combined 1-19 and this year. It is truly the most irrelevant statistic surrounding this game. There is a football game to be played, uh, Todd. Navy looking for its first win. What's important for them? Well, I think they're going to have to get a real solid game out of their senior quarterback and co-captain, Ryan Broadwater. This offense has played well the last two games, but they still haven't gotten a win. Broadwater played very well in this game in 98 in a losing effort. Then last year, sat out and watched Brian Madden lead Navy to victory. But this will be the game that Broadwater will remember for the rest of his life. Well, the cadets are under the leadership of the new coach, Todd Berry, his first Army-Navy game today. He came in and really changed things offensively. Yeah, he changed the whole philosophy, the whole look of what they're doing offense, a much more balanced offensive attack. As we take a look at our Exxon virtual playbook, we'll see for the last several years, Army was a wishbone team. Two tight ends, three backs in the backfield. But now, this year in Todd Berry's offense, we'll see a little bit of everything. Some trips, formations, three receivers and a tight end. We'll even see some shotgun with five wide receivers. But regardless of how they line up, the bottom line is they've got to get the ball in the hands of their two playmakers. Running back Michael Wallace is the leading rusher in Conference USA this year. And junior wide receiver Omari Thompson is a guy who can do a lot of things when he gets his hands on the ball as a returner or a receiver. They've got to get those guys the football to win the football game. 101st meeting between these two, but only the third time this game has been played in the city of Baltimore. Last time, 56 years ago to the day. And for more on that, let's go down to the sidelines, and here's Jill Arrington. Thanks, Vern. That's right. The last time Army and Navy played here in Baltimore, it was 1944. Then President Roosevelt moved the game here amidst World War II to try to boost the morale of the country. Even the proceeds and tickets went to aiding the war. They played at the old packed municipal stadium. 
Stadium. The top ranked and undefeated cadets went up against the second ranked midshipmen. Army was led by Coach Earl Red Blake. The cadets won with a great play of their team captain and quarterback Tom Lombardo and Mr. Outside Glenn Davis. After Army's 23 to 7 victory, Coach Blake received a telegram from MacArthur saying, "The greatest of all Army teams, stop." We have stopped the war to celebrate your magnificent success, MacArthur. It was a storybook team, the 1944 national champions. Now let's go over to the Navy sidelines with Dean Blevins. Charm City, Baltimore has embraced this game like none other. The anticipation has been building all week long. In fact, you sort of get the feel of a national championship game of two undefeated teams. It all started yesterday. Bill the Goat and the Navy cheerleaders led a pep rally on the impressive Inner Harbor. The military showed off its hardware. The Navy ships the Army attack helicopters. FanFest to ensure that everyone is involved. But the highlight of it all was this morning is the long gray line of cadets and the brigade of midshipmen proudly marched through the downtown streets all the way to the stadium. And by the way, Baltimore hopes to get this game on a rotating basis. They've done everything they can, and now we know why they are called Charm City. Indeed, Dean. The long gray line. It is a brilliant day, frigid but brilliant. <laughs> 32 degrees, humidity 59%, winds out of the northeast at five, and uh, the clouds cleared out. Here is David Hills, his army has won the toss and elected to receive. 48, 45, and seven. First meeting in Baltimore since that moment that Jill just discussed, 1944. Prior to that, the two teams had gotten together here in 1924. Now there's Omari Thompson, one of the return guys, and Todd Berry told us when we talked to him on the phone, if this kickoff is five yards deep in the end zone or less, they let Omari run it out, take a chance for a big play. Hills has to kick it into the wind, and it affected the ball. It goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And here's the senior Joe Jarena gets the call as a starter today. He and Chad Jenkins have split much of the season. And Jarena as the senior out of Del Rico, Florida, playing in his seventh game. He was the hero of the 1998 yeah. win, come from behind game 34 30. MVP of that game. We mentioned Brian Broadwater played well in a losing effort, but Jarena came in off the bench and played very well. And they stack three receivers wide to the left on first down and will go from the spread formation. <laughs> New look. Yes, it is. Three man front. Here's the flip out in the backfield to Omari Thompson. And the junior from Miami has a catch on the first down play. Well, this is tw <laughs> trips left and twins right, and they get the ball in the hands of one of those two playmakers right away. Omari Thompson. Got banged up in their last game against UAB, had to leave the game in the second quarter, but he's healthy now. And again, a guy who can make you miss and can score when he gets his hands on the football. Out to the 45 yard line. Now Michael Wallace is in the backfield. Two yards shy of 1,000 yards for the season. Option play. Jarena will keep it. Now he'll pitch it back, and here goes Wallace. The senior from San Antonio out of balance at the 40 yard line. Tackled by Dewan Comer. 13 yard game. Let's check this uh, Army offense now. Henderson, Gonzalez, Gordon, Plumador, and Larkin, the front line. Michael Wallace, Calvin Smith, Eris Como, Amari Thompson, and the tight end is Clint Dotson. First and ten, back to back big games for Army. Jarena wants to throw. Across the middle, incomplete, a little too high, intended for his tight end, Clint Dodson. He was there. Defensively for the midshipmen, and this has been a real weak point for the Naval Academy this year. Wimsat, Brindell, and Wagoner, the three front men. Jordan, Matthews, Bowen, and Chizel, the linebackers. And a change at left corner where David Alexander did not suit up. He's the starter. And uh, so his place, the fellow on the left, that was a late, late decision. And uh, Shalimar Brazier, Brazier has taken his place. Here's the handoff to Wallace. 
at the 39 yard line. Ben Matthews makes the tackle. Well, here is yeah. an example graphically of uh, their problems defensively, Todd. Yeah, it's, it's not too hard to find out why a team doesn't win many ball games or any in the case of Navy when you don't stop people. You see right there, 430 yards per game that they've given up. Even the last two weeks when they've gained so many yards, they've given up just as many in losing efforts. Third and eight, here comes the blitz. Jarena forced out to his right. Looks deep, has a man, goes in toward the end zone. And it is incomplete. Intended for Josh Holden, number 28. Well, this is a nice job by Joe Jarena avoiding the unblocked man. I mean, there's going to be a blitz coming right here, and he is unblocked. And Jarena does a nice job eluding the pressure, and then this is a scramble adjustment by Holden. He saw his quarterback scrambling and he took off down the sideline. You see him right here taking off and going to the end zone. A good adjustment by Holden. Just couldn't make the catch. Army will go for it on fourth down. This is not all that unusual. 35th time this year they've attempted a fourth down conversion. They've been successful on 20. And they're going to deal, I believe, yep, with five more yards. Delay of game. It uh, looks like they were, I'm not sure if the penalty would have, would not have given them a first down, even if they have, would have drawn Navy offsides. And Dan McElroy, the putter does come on. Yeah, now. It's a good decision by Todd Berry. I, I know he likes to gamble and go for it, but early in the ball game, a good chance to try to pin Navy deep and let your defense get on the field. McElroy, a junior from Bear, Delaware, and there's Billy Hubbard, number 86, regarded by Navy as a fearless punt returner. He uh, shows a certain disdain for the fair catch. There's a bobbled snap. And the ball goes over to the Naval Academy at the 41-yard line. Michael Wagner, number 90, made the tackle. Well, we mentioned it's a cold day. And that ball is hard and slick on its way back. And Dan McElroy, this was not a bad snap. He just did not field it cleanly. This has not been a real strength for Army this year. Two punts blocked in their last game against UAB. This was a good snap. And McElroy just unable to make the catch. A loss of concentration and a big break for the Naval Academy. Midshipmen have the ball first and 10 at the 41. 13.48 to go first quarter. Here is the senior quarterback, Brian Broadwater, from Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. First and 10, Naval Academy at the 41. Option play, Broadwater comes left. Began this day needing only 67 yards rushing to surpass Heisman Trophy winner Joe Bellino as the 10th all-time runner in Navy history. Offensive line, Winchester, yay the senior, back from a broken leg, gets the start today. Chad Adams, Scott Swantner, and Hoot Stahl at right tackle. Donnie Fricks, Josh Bach, and Raheem Lambert, the three running backs. And the wideouts are Dominic Bailey and Brian Williams. Bach in motion, option again. Broadwater cuts it up inside the 30 and is down to the 28-yard line. The tackle made by Derek McNally, number four. Defensively for the Black Knights, Hurst, Heiliger, Criddle, and Mitchell, the front four. Three linebackers, Goodwin, four rather. It's a 4-4 defense. Goodwin, Weaver, Jason Frazier, and Brian Zickelfus is the leading tackler on the team. Dial, McNally, and Burke, the defensive backs. Option left, pitch back. And a scramble for the ball as Lambert loses it, but then does fall on it at the 35-yard line. And again, Vern, on a cold day like this, an arm no, does Army come up it. with the football. Brian Zickelfus, number 36. He's their leading tackler. He's their big play guy, and he has a nose for the football, as you'll find out on this play. He was in charge of the quarterback. He forced the bad pitch and then won the fight with Raheem Lambert for the football. One turnover for Army, now a turnover for Navy. And the Black Knights back on the offensive. 
Well, throughout the day, we will be receiving messages from throughout the world and maybe beyond. <laughs> and here is the first message about the Army-Navy game. Want to know who's going to win the Army-Navy game? Here's a hint. Four now remaining first quarter as Brian Broadwater talks with the coaching staff upstairs. After the fumble recovery, first down at the 35 Army. They have lost only three and maybe 105th in the country. Here's the fake reverse up the middle. Here goes Wallace. There goes Wallace. Michael Wallace, the senior. Touchdown Army. 65 yards. Nice play call by John Bond, the offensive coordinator. We talked about the two playmakers. This time they used Omari Thompson as a decoy. Watch the fake on the reverse. Fools the Navy defense, and then nobody picks up Michael Wallace. Everybody concentrating on the reverse fake, and then Michael Wallace shows that burst of speed to get to the end zone. Michael Wallace, the senior, over 1,000 yards for the senior. Uh, 65 yard run. Here's Mullen with the extra point. The left footer puts it up and knocks it home. Another look at the touchdown. Right tackle Mike Larkin with a huge block. And then the speed of Michael Wallace gets Army on the board first. Welcome aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor. I'm Commander Brent Jett, Naval Academy class of 1981 and commander of the SDS-97 mission, which is a mission to deliver the first U.S. power module to the International Space Station Alpha. We're currently about 200 miles above the Earth, traveling about 18,000 miles an hour on our way to rendezvous and dock with, the, with Alpha and her crew, which is commanded by Captain Bill Shepard, Naval Academy class of 1971. On behalf of all Navy and Marine Corps astronauts, past and present, we just wanted to say, Go Navy! Be Army! That's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> That's pretty good. 7-0 on Michael Wallace's 65-yard scamper with the football. Look at this unusual formation. They got an unusual punt formation. Now it looks like single wing kickoff. <laughs> Navy has Brazier and Jamal back. That's Rashad Jamal, number 34. And here's the kick by Mullen. Bounces once. And return to the 24-yard line. Take one more look at that Michael Wallace run. Yeah, and the thing I want you to see is Navy's best defensive player, Chris Lepore, right here. Watch him key on the reverse. He's watching Omari Thompson, and he takes himself right out of the play, and Wallace runs right past him. Chris Lepore is a very good football player, but that time fooled by the reverse fake and paid for it with the touchdown. First down and 10, Navy at their own 22 and a half yard line. Lambert is the fullback. Josh Bach is number 43, comes split wide to the left side. There's the option pitch. And it's Donnie Fricks, number 39, the sophomore from Houston. Derek McNally with a tackle. And that right there is exactly what Army wants to do defensively. They want to stop the inside run first and string that option out, make the ball get pitched, and try to run to the football. And Derek McNally, the free safety, has got a big responsibility in that. Charlie Weatherby in his sixth season as head coach, his sixth Army-Navy game, has won a couple. Second down. Broadwater with the audible.
There's the option, and the keeper by Broadwater leads his way nice. for a first down. Yes, it was. Nice job. Nice Eight job enough. checking at the line of scrimmage and going to where he saw the weakness. And then a nice job of being patient and allowing it to develop and making the nice decision of when to cut up. Sets up the option. He's got to come downhill. Makes a nice read on keeping the football. And then gets his shoulders upfield and gets the first down. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. This time a fullback keeps it. And Lambert plunges to the 40, perhaps the 41-yard line. See where the spot is. Jason Frazier, number 52, with the tackle. And in his first Army-Navy game, Todd Berry, head coach, came here from Illinois State, where he turned the program around in four years. Really uh, an energetic, yeah. charismatic young man. Second down. Broadwater still has it. Now the pitch. It's Bach. And that's another Navy first down across the 50 to the 47-yard line. Gain of 12. Well, we saw Brian Broadwater do a nice job of running the football. Now watch him this time. Attack downhill on the option. And then at the very last minute, make the pitch right there. He knows he has to get rid of the ball, but he holds it long enough to allow the pitch man to get outside. And then you see the block downfield by Dominic Bailey gets a few extra yards for Josh Bach. You know, we got an old option quarterback on the sidelines. Dean Blevins was a great option quarterback at Oklahoma. We'll have to get his report on how Broadwater's doing pretty soon. Here's Bach coming left and another fine Navy run. Well, maybe we uh, documented their problems defensively. They've really turned it around offensively in the last two ball games, Tom. Yeah, they really have. Now, they didn't win either game, but amazingly, against Tulane, 724 yards of offense. You say, how do you lose a game when you gain 724? Well, they had six turnovers in the game as well. And that's a, a big key for them this whole season, not being able to protect the football. But the last two weeks, they really have moved the football and scored some points. Trailing 7 0, a second down at the 40. Lambert, Fricks, and Bach are the running backs. Wing back set. This is Fricks in motion. And Broadwater spins out of the tackle, cuts down to the 35 yard line. First down. Governor, one of the things uh, when I watched film of Army on defense this year with this 4 4 3 defense, they like to shift and move and show a lot of different things and move late in the cadence. Well, against an option team, they can't really afford to do that. So Army's having to kind of line up in their defense. Whatever they're going to play, they're lining up in right now. And Broadwater is doing a lot of checking and audibling at the line of scrimmage. You see how he's looking at the defense and checking into the appropriate play. First down, 10 Navy at the 35. Heading right, keeper cuts it up, out of bounds at the 30. Well, we talked about the option quarterback, Dean Blevins, at the University of Oklahoma. Give us a give us a grade, Dean. How's Broadwater doing? Well, so far, so good. I think he's doing a good job. Todd mentions attacking downhill. He's attacking the end man on the line of scrimmage. That time he did another good job of getting them into the right play. I think the one thing you've got to remember, though, speed kills. If you have it, you kill the other team. If you don't have it, you get killed. So that's what's hurt them so far this season. I didn't have any speed, so I, I had to wear big shoulder pads whenever I was going to run the option. <laughs> Broadwater with 34 yards already. Drops back to throw. Pumps, fires it out. Caught inside the 15-yard line. The catch is made by Josh Bach, senior out of Peekskill, New York. 18-yard game. We talked about the Navy offense coming alive the last couple weeks. Well, Josh Bach has been coming alive the last couple weeks. He was the slot receiver running the corner route. A nice throw by Broadwater, and in the middle of three defenders, Bach does a nice job of going up and catching the football. First down at the 13, Lambert, Fricks, and Bach in the backfield. They slip the ball to Lambert. He cuts inside the 10 and is down near the seven-yard line. Raheem Lambert, a junior out of Riverside, California, who uh, came in as the leading ball carrier for this Navy team with 563 yards. Charlie Weatherby, young man who uh, came here after head coaching responsibilities at Utah State, another Oklahoman, 
He was a quarterback roughly the same time as Dean Blevins at Oklahoma. Charlie was at Oklahoma State. Still was. Second and six. Broadwater comes left. Now the pitch. Bach down to the three. See where that spot is. It appears to be short of the first down. It's an important opportunity right now inside the five yard line for Navy. You know, a team that is 0 10, your confidence level can really be shaky. And then you give up the big long touchdown to Michael Wallace. Uh, a chance to get even on the scoreboard would do wonders for the confidence level of this Navy football team. Third and one, Williams and Bailey go wide right. Broadwater hit and dropped. Or he might have slipped. You know, Dean mentioned, and we talked about going downhill. This time, watch Broadwater get a little too deep on the option. He's getting outside. He's going to run that all the way, and he just tripped over the feet of Donnie Fricks, his lead back. Donnie Fricks, 39, tripped him up. And that will bring on David Hills to attempt the field goal. Six and eight for the season. This from 23 yards out to put Navy on the board. Well, it wasn't pretty. They don't count that. <laughs> they don't make you draw pictures of them. This is not figure skating, no style points. <laughs> that one kind of limped through. <laughs> Navy's on the board at 7 3. Every seat sold. This game has been a sellout for quite some time. We invite you to test your sports knowledge. Play Aflac Trivia at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. 12 play drive for Navy, 72 yards. And they get on the board with a 23 yard field goal off the toe of David Hills. And he is getting set to kick off. Thompson number three. They tried to kick away from him on the opening kickoff ended up kicking it out of bounds and when you're struggling on defense you, you don't want to give that team starting field position at the 35 so I would imagine they'll out, go ahead and try to kick the ball deep this time. Into the breeze. This will be short Thompson moves up grabs it at the 11. Got some room. Huh? Just about slipped through. He's down at the 30 yard line. Tackle made by Mike Waddell, and we go down to Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, with such a huge rivalry at stake, you might think that there's been plenty of preparation. And from a military academy, what else would you expect? They have their own operations package here. How thorough does it get? They even have their own reconnaissance pictures of the stadium. It gets real detailed in here, but the one message that's clear and simple, the most important, their mission, beat Navy. <laughs> All right. First down at the 30. Hand off Michael Wallace heading left. Up and out of bounds. Tackle made by Marcus Jackson, number 17, a gain of nine as uh, Army seems to be moving almost at will. Well, Navy is not very big on defense. They've struggled. They've lost some key defenders, and they've not been able to turn the ball over from other teams. And, and really, if they don't do that today, they're going to have problems against this team. Michael Wallace is a hard, tough runner. They've got to force the issue, force a few turnovers. There's Wallace. Down to the 43 yards, 43 yard line rather. 7-3 the score. This is the 101st meeting Army with a narrow lead in the series. And look how close these yeah. things are. It's amazing. Somebody ought to demand a recount. <laughs> Touchdowns and points in favor of the Naval Academy. First down and 10.
Play action, Jarena lofts it out and is caught by Anthony Miller, number 88, at the 47-yard line. Clyde Clark, number 33, with the tackle. Young man from Austin, Texas. He's a Maroon. He graduated from <laughs> Stephen F. Austin High School. A you and your Texas nickname. A gratuitous <laughs> pop for the alma mater. <laughs> Clyde Clark. Second and six. Comes the blitz from maybe Jarena. Whoops. That one intended for Todd Grimm, number 32. You see where Michael Wallace is in single season rushing and over a thousand yards this season and and really has played banged up for a part of the season. He had a broken wrist in the third game. He's played with that all season. He's had shoulder and hamstring problems late in the season. And this pass incomplete intended for Clint Dodson, number 89. It'll be fourth down. In order for this offense to go, not only do they have to run it with Michael Wallace, but Joe Jarena has got to be sharp throwing the football. And so far, early in this ball game, he's not looked particularly sharp. They've had some people open. He's two for six right now. And Billy Hubbard awaits the punt now of uh, Dan McElroy. Remember, they had a bobbled punt earlier as McElroy could not control the snap. This one, he's got and gets it away. Hubbard moves up. It's a short punt. Hubbard grabs it at the 25 and is down at the 29. And a flag is also down at the 23-yard line. Tackle made by Anthony Miller. That's a 28-yard punt, five on the return. Well, the penalty is going to be for violating the halo area for the return man. And interference on the kicking team. Five yard first down. Anthony Miller was the first guy down there. And and one thing he's got to know is that Hubbard's not going to fair catch it. I mean, this guy does not like to fair catch. And Anthony Miller just too close to the return man. Five oh one to go first quarter seven three Broadwater and at quarterback again he has been the most potent weapon offensively thus far and we'll keep it again blocked as he gets to the thirty five yard line well coming up tonight I know you've been waiting for this mm -hmm. ice wars. Brian Boitano, Christy Yamaguchi, Browning, Vip, Candeloro. It's a two-hour special, Ice Wars USA versus the World tonight, 9, 8 Central. I could tell you who won, but I want to keep the suspense going. It's a good show. You were there, right? I was there. Close to your hometown, Wilkes-Barre. Broadwater forced out of bounds. Brian Broadwater uh, was the starter last year as a junior through seven games and uh, became injured, gave way to Brian Madden and actually lost the job. Madden became the leading rushing quarterback in the country last year. Then in the spring game, Madden suffered a knee injury, the last play of the spring game, and Broadwater became the starter, but he suffered with injuries up and down this year as well, including, this sounds awful, a fractured larynx. Yeah. Strange injury. Yeah. One of those real freak injuries. He's bent back and got a helmet right in the throat. Here's Broadwater. Fires it out. It's caught for the first down. Chandler Sims, a sophomore from Oklahoma City, makes the catch. And Navy gets a first and ten. It's not the first injury that Brian Broadwater has sustained. Freshman, a broken leg, sophomore, an injured shoulder, fractured clavicle last year, and then the bruised larynx. I guess officially you don't call it a fractured larynx because it's cartilage. 
Here's the toss. And Gene Reese, number five, sophomore. Moves easily around the left side, out near the 50, and perhaps across it before the tackle is made by Brent Dial, number 21. I like what I see out of Broadwater right now. I mean, he is focused. He's on top of the game. He's got a good feel for what Army's trying to do defensively. He's very poised at the line of scrimmage and making a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage, and he's running the option and throwing the football very well so far. He's off to a very good start for the Navy offense. We talked about, uh, as you see, the chain come across for the measurement. Here's Brian Madden, 897 yeah. yards rushing last year. The game against uh, Army last year, he carried the ball 41 times, 177 yards. I mean, here's a guy who, when he runs the option, he does not want to pitch it. He wants to keep the football. Gained 177 yards, was the MVP of the game, and and really was a, a good quarterback. And, and, and they were building around him. And of course, as you mentioned, got hurt in the spring game and Broadwater. They were fortunate they had a guy with experience who could come in and be the starter this year. Navy does get the first down inside the 48 yard line. Now the audible from Broadwater. He's got Reese in the wing to the left. They hand it to the fullback Lambert. And Raheem Lambert out of Riverside, California, runs into Jason Frazier, number 52, for Army. Now, we mentioned Brian Madden. He magically appears. He's with Dean Blevins. Brian, they were just talking about the injury. and How is that coming along? And you expect to play again next year, I guess? Yes, sir, no doubt. I, you know, it's it's come along really well. It was disappointment from the get-go, spring game, just kind of unfortunate accident. But no doubt, you know, I'm, I'm working almost back to 100%, looking forward to next season. I want to ask I want to ask you about your gut feeling right now because it has to hurt after what happened last year. Here's Broadwater going right. He's loose. Doesn't have great speed, but he has enough to get in for the score. that in this defensive scheme the free safety Derek McNally is going to have a big job he's got to run into the alley and make tackles in the open field watch him miss the tackle on Broadwater and that's all Broadwater needed to get to the end zone you ask your free safety to run down that alley and make the play on the quarterback that time he missed and Navy gets the touchdown and Brian Broadwater has now imagined this. He has now surpassed the rushing total in naval history of Joe Bellino, who won the Heisman in 1960. This a 45 yard run. Navy leads. Two fifty three to go first quarter ten seven. After the 45 yard run by Brian Broadwater. Maybe up by three and kicking off. Amari Thompson will move up and grab this one at the 14 yard line. He's a threat. He was down. Down by contact. No fumble on that play. And let's check in once again with uh, Dean and Brian Madden. Brian, I guess your stomach isn't so sick now after that play. What was the play? How'd that develop? You know, it's just a little double option. Brian brought, you know, he just got out there, got found a seam, and, you know, made a big play. You know, we haven't had a lot of those this year, so if there's a game to do it, definitely Army-Navy game is time to make a big play and step up. How are you able to help this team while you're hurt? You know, it's been tough. You know, emotionally, I think it's been a kind of a letdown for this team, but you still got to be a leader, you know, pat the guys in the back when they, you know, had some disappointment in the season. So I think, you know, just dig in there for them. Here's a pass to Jarena. Josh Holden, number 28. And that's a gain of 21. A yeah, nice little burst that time by Josh Holden. Very simple pass. Trying to do something to get Joe Jarena, I think, into a little better rhythm throwing the football. A nice, easy little swing pass. And then Holden showed a nice burst getting upfield once he caught the football. Good for a first down at the 36 yard line. I think they got to keep feeding the ball to Michael Wallace. I, I don't think Navy can stop Army running the football or stop Michael Wallace. 
This time they give it to Wallace and he plunges up the middle. Inside the 35. Now throw the ball a little bit to keep him honest. Get the ball to Amari Thompson sometimes, but for the most part, see if Navy can withstand the, the physical challenge of just running big Michael Wallace at him. This will be a second down and eight. And they line up in the I formation. Clinton Dotson now goes tight to the left side out of that uh, fullback spot. And Wallace gets the handoff. Good contact made at the line of scrimmage. Ben Matthews and Brad Wimsat, number 94. One of the seniors for Navy today. Double header for you tomorrow, the NFL on CBS at 1 o'clock. Miami and Buffalo, Denver against the Saints, and the other games you see, and then at 4.15, Indianapolis against the Jets. And it all begins with the NFL today, tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. Third and eight. Jarena from the spread. Little pattern underneath, and Eris Como cannot hang on to it. It'll be fourth down. Well, let's see if Todd Berry elects to go for it. Uh, recall that earlier, from roughly this same position, they uh, appeared to be ready to attempt the fourth down conversion and had a delay call, and that led to a bobbled hold on the punt. Fourth and they, eight. Yeah, I think they'll run a play this time. I think the last time they were trying to get a penalty. This time, I think they'll run a play, but they've got to hurry. The play clock is down. Jarena back. Comes into the flat, and it is behind Holden. Incomplete. Ball goes over on downs. Kind of a tough catch to make on that play. Jarena wanted to go downfield first. He's looking downfield, and Holden is going to be his outlet receiver. He comes to him late, and there's a defender there, and the ball a little bit behind. Good defense downfield to take away Jarena's first option. And Todd Berry knows that fourth down attempt came up short. First down, Navy. They lead 10 7. Broadwater for one. Cuts inside his right guard and right tackle. Well, let's take a look at some other numbers involving these two. How about the wishbone era at Navy? Whoops. <laughs> They've gone to the pass a little bit. Second and eight. Reese is the pitch man, and he has it. From Broadwater goes right. Out of bounds to stop the clock at the 42 yard line. And it uh, stops with two seconds to go in the quarter. Charlie Weatherby really likes Gene Reese. He's got real good quickness, and he's a guy who had a turf toe injury against Tulane and has missed four or five games. Came back to practice this week. Tuesday was his first day of practice since injuring that toe against Tulane, and uh, he's a guy with good speed that they really like having in this offense. Ed Malinowski has come in at quarterback now. For Broadwater, number 10. Played quite a bit this year because of the injury to Broadwater. And Malinowski runs the option right. Follows Reese's block and gets a first down. It's a little bit more like a quarterback sweep than it is an option. That's a designed run all the way for the quarterback. Malinowski, we were told he was going to run some plays in the goal line in short yardage. That time gets a little break also for Brian Broadwater. That's the end of the first quarter with our score 10-7 Navy. We'll return to PSI Net Stadium in Baltimore after this message and a word from your local station. We welcome you back to Baltimore and the 101st Army Navy game. Navy leading after.
after 15 minutes of play, 10-7. And a first down, 10-4, the Navy at the 45-yard line. Broadwater, a 45-yard touchdown scamper. Reese gets the pitch. And a fine Army defensive effort. He's down after a gain of two. Second down and eight here in Baltimore. Impressions from the first quarter of play. Well, I think the difference has been Brian Broadwater. I think he's played extremely well. He's outplayed Joe Jarena so far in this first part of the ball game. And historically, at least the last couple years, the quarterback has made the difference. You know, last year, Brian Madden was the MVP. The year before that, Joe Jarena of Army was the MVP. So I think Brian Broadwater has played very well so far here in the first half, running the Navy offense and getting some confidence back into the Navy football team. Second down and eight, the audible again for Broadwater. He's got Bach, Lambert, and Fricks in the backfield. Tackle close to first down yardage at the 45-yard line by Derek McNally. You know, Vern, one guy I think that needs to step up for Army right now defensively is their linebacker, Lyle Weaver. He's been banged up some this year, but he is their big play defensive player. Last year, he forced five fumbles, had a couple interceptions. Again, he's been banged up a little bit this year with uh, some knee injuries, but he is a guy who can make big plays. And right now, this defense is reeling a little bit. They need somebody to step up and make a play. Malinowski has now replaced Broadwater again at quarterback on third down and short. And there is the quarterback keeper and a first down maybe at the 44. Well, these uh, gorgeous views from overhead coming to you from the PSI net sky cam. Innovative camera work. Uh, it's uh, remotely operated on four guy wires that crisscross the stadium. It's an interesting perspective. Yeah, it does give you some great shots. It really does. Well, let's watch a play from Skycam. First down and 10. Broadwater back in. First and 10, maybe leads by three. Pitch back. Josh Barnes. Lyle Weaver, number six. Heard Todd's call for action. There's the sky cam. We've gone from space shuttle greetings to a sky cam. <laughs> what happens if the ball hits that? Like in the old uh, Sandlot do-over, I guess, right. huh? <laughs> <laughs> there was a flag. Against Army. Offside. Second, first and five. Now they've changed the down marker. Broadwater for the day, total of 116 yards. He'll pass or wants to under a little pressure. Goes right, double coverage, incomplete. Intended for Billy Hubbard, number 86. It'll be second down and five. Pretty good coverage by Army. You would expect that to be a little more open after they've run the ball so well off the option. Normally, when you fake the option and throw, you get somebody running free, but that time, good di discipline by Todd Berry's defense. Second and five. Hubbard breaks and goes wide to the left side. Brent Dial will come up and defend him. Here's the toss to Lambert, and contact made immediately. He's down short of the first down yardage at the 37. That was Brent Dial, number 21. Nice play by Brent Dial, but you see the strength of Raheem Lambert because this initial contact was made right about the line of scrimmage. The pitch is forced. Now watch right there's the initial contact by Dial, but Lambert able to keep moving forward and get into a third down and short situation. Good strength by Raheem Lambert. Third and three. Broadwater keeps it, gets a block, and a first down of a 32-yard line. Lyle Weaver, middle linebacker number six with the tackle. 
Lyle Weaver, the playmaker. They bring a lineman out on him that time. Scott Swantner, the right guard, got a good piece of Lyle Weaver. Weaver gets the tackle, but not after the first down is made. Sims goes wide left to first down and 10. 11th first down for Navy already in the ball game. Now he's, over. he's got a man. Brian Williams, touchdown, Navy. Brian Williams told us yesterday, I would want nothing more than to have a touchdown reception in this my final game. <laughs> well, his wish has come true, and that's what you expect to see when you play action off the option is somebody running free. The free safety, Derek McNally, is going to bite on the option, and Williams is going to run right by him. McNally, with his eyes in the backfield, paid too much attention to the option and the touchdown throw over his head. David Hills for the extra point. Up and good. Brian Williams is a high school senior recruited by both the Army and the Navy. He made his recruiting visit first to West Point, two weeks later to Annapolis, and he became Annapolis bound. Army with the ball, third and seven near midfield. Ready, set, big play. Happy birthday. Hut, hut, hut. Hooray! What? Look at that! Army has pulled a birthday cake out of its bag of tricks, and how appropriate to celebrate the 100th birthday of the United States Submarine Force. Happy birthday! Go Navy! Be Army! <laughs> uh, it's imaginative. 17-7. <laughs> Naval Academy in its long history of playing this game has had only two winless seasons. One of them, in 1883, they lost the only game they played to Johns Hopkins, 2-0. The other was in 91. They're looking for their first victory today, and here is Todd Bryan, number 32, returning it out across the 30. Let's take another look at the touchdown from the sky cam. There's Derek McNally. Brian Williams did a nice thing. The receiver ran at the free safety like he was going to block in the option and then turned right up field past him for the touchdown. Well executed play action pass off the option and a great look from the sky cam. First and 10 Army. They've got the ball at their own 34 yard line trailing by 10. Michael Wallace is the running back. Former wishbone fullback. Gets the toss, oh, it's a little high, but he handles it. And comes left, and Porter's down the sidelines, out of bounds at the 45. That'll be good for a first down. That was a great block by Anthony Miller, the wide receiver. That's the only reason that play still worked, because the, the timing was disrupted by the high pitch. Watch the pitch by Jarena, a little hard to handle for Wallace, but out on the left side, on the outside, Anthony Miller staying with this block, and that enabled Wallace to still be able to turn the corner and gain 11 yards. Wallace gets a rest, and Alton McCollum, McCallum comes in. Here's Jarena. Back to throw, deep down the middle. Calvin Smith, there's a tussle for the ball, and a flag at the 20-yard line. Marcus Jackson, I believe, is going to be flagged for interference. Yeah, a lot of contact when the ball was in the air. Calvin Smith trying to, to get to the football. Calvin Smith, the fastest guy on the Army team. There you see the push late in the play by Marcus Jackson and a good call by the official. Had a little trouble finding his flag, but <laughs> knew what he wanted to do anyway. Wait a minute, they're calling it on Army. On the offense. Whoa. 15 yards, previous spot, repeat first down. Boy, I don't know about that call. I thought there was the push by Marcus Jackson. Watch this push by Marcus Jackson, and then at the end, they're going to... Oh, that's a terrible call. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think Army may want to recount. Wow. First and 25. Here's Jarena. Tipped. Incomplete. Caught. Nope, it was bobbled. Cliff Dodson 
who has 35 catches for the year at the tight end. It'll be second and 25. Brad Wimsett's going to get a, a hand on the football. We got a chance to visit with him yesterday. Here he is, 94, gets up, gets his right hand on the football. Well, you talk about the passion and the emotion of playing in the Army-Navy game. He was the epitome of that in our visit with him yesterday. Has 40 friends and family here today. Jarena intercepted way too high. Here comes Lepore of Navy. A flag is also down, but the interception as Jarena sent it five feet too high. And another flag thrown back at the 20-yard line by the referee. So we've got interception and two flags. I think there's a, a penalty after the interception and then a personal foul at the end of the play. An Army in a very, very difficult situation right now. Not a good throw at all by Joe Gerino over the middle. Of the interception, we have a block in the back on the return team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. We also have a dead ball foul on the other team, 15 yards grasping the face mask. We'll go 10 this way and 15 this way. That would be five. Even I can figure that out with a sociology degree. Vern, when you throw the ball down the middle, you cannot let the ball hang in the air. He's trying to get the ball to the tight end, Dodson. When you throw it in the middle, you better throw it on the line. Don't let that thing sail because free safeties are sitting there waiting for it. And that's exactly what Chris Lepore saw in this play. The ball up in the air and an easy pick for the senior from North Olmsted, Ohio. We welcome you back to PSI Net Stadium in Baltimore. Only the third time this game has ever been played in this city. And it has been a spectacular weekend of celebration. First down and 10. Broadwater keeps it. Nice play. Yes, indeed. You know, the thing that he's doing is he's not hesitating at all, Vern. And, and I know from my little itty bitty experience in the option, one of the rules of thumb is. <laughs> If you hesitate, you're going to get beat. You're going to make a mistake. And he is not hesitating. His decision making is very sharp right now in the first half. Broadwater has led the Navy to a 10 point lead. Well, they'll measure and see if indeed he got the first down. Got a chance to visit with Brian yesterday. Played at Lower Dauphin High School and told me when I met him yesterday, he says, yeah, I grew up a big Penn State fan. He well, said, he, let, me, let me just amend that. He said he grew up watching. Well, him. I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Broadwater, who has aspirations of becoming a navigator, wants to go into naval aviation. He told us his eyes weren't good enough to become a pilot. Yeah, have to be a backseat driver. Yeah. And just short on the first down at the 35 yard line. 17 7. Lambert, first down. Maybe at the 33. Well, it is that time that you anticipate each week. The Aflac trivia question. Philadelphia has been host to 75 Army Navy games. Which city is second? Not Baltimore. For that matter, it's not Cheyenne, Wyoming. <laughs> First down and 10. Come on up. Reese up. Oh, there's a mix up on the exchange, but not so not so much so that they didn't get a nice yard gain out of it as Pat Haynes a junior fullback this is just poor tackling I mean it's good penetration by the Army defense but they just don't wrap up the fullback Broadwater is caught right there is able to still slip the ball to the fullback everybody knocks Broadwater on the ground but nobody tackles the fullback 
And another good game for Pat Haynes in the Navy offense. Second down and two. Here's Haynes, stiffen. Jason Frazier, number 52, the sophomore for Army, straightened him up. But it appears he might have enough for another first down. Well, this is not surprising for Navy. They, they do throw the ball more than you would think for an option team, but right now, no need to throw it except for that occasional play action, which can be so effective when your option is going. And right now, the Navy option is going very well. 8.48 to go first half, Navy up by 10. The 20 yard line when the tackle is made. And this will be a second down. Well, this uh, game moved to Baltimore, as we said, for the third time. Mark Modell, who is the owner of the Baltimore Ravens, very uh, important figure in getting the game in this city. And I must say, it has been a spectacular weekend of celebration. Mark Modell and uh, the mayor, Martin McNally. There's the handoff to Haynes. And uh, there are high hopes here that somewhere in the rotation, the game goes back to Philadelphia for the next two years. And uh, there is some thought, obviously given in this city, that uh, it might be a nice home and home location in a three city rotation with uh, Baltimore. New York and Philadelphia. That's to be determined down the future. But this has been a great weekend. Third down. Haynes still in the fullback. Broadwater to the right. There's the pitch. That's short of the first down on third down as uh, Derek McNally, the senior from Los Angeles number four for Army makes the tackle. I think Army is trying to get a little more physical here against this option. They've got to do a better job of tackling this time the quarterback is accounted for and McNally a nice job making the tackle on the sideline short of the first down. Derek McNally making his 33rd career start and against this kind of an offense he really has a lot of responsibility. That will bring on David Hills for his second field goal attempt of the day from 32 yards out. And he knocks one home for the second time. So David Hills, the junior, two for two, 23 and 32. And that increases the Navy lead to 13 points. to go before the break. Navy leading 20 to 7, looking for their first victory of the year 2000. Talked about the fact that they uh, had only had two winless seasons. Last was in 1991. They tied Army that year. And here's a return down at the 20-yard line. Omari Thompson. Nineteen forty eight they came in 0 and 8 and tied an army team 28 all and then in 91 they came in 5 and 5 and uh, knocked off army. 24 3. Well we talked about Omari Thompson being a guy they have to get the ball to. He's only had one touch offensively. That was the first play of the game. Here he is right here in the slot. He's got to get his hands on the football for army. Arena, 3 of 11 with an interception and he is hit as he tries to deliver the football. It's an incomplete pass. We may have a flag with a face mask. 
No, I think it's going to be intentional, intentional grounding. grounding. Yep. Okay. Wimsat was the guy who got there. Intentional grounding yep. on the offense. That's a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Second down. Here's Wimsett right here coming over the, the guard position. They cut him, but he just shows great hustle and effort. He doesn't give up on the play and then gets in and draws the penalty. Joe Jarena not able to get rid of the football. And Army backed up in a big hole again inside their 10-yard line. 12-yard penalty, second down and 22. Jarena pitches back to Wallace, who's nailed. A great job defensively by Matt Brooks taking on the pitch man and never losing sight of him. Well, what Matt Brooks did was he ran right through the block of Omari Thompson. Now, Thompson is a make you miss big play guy, but at 5'7, 160, he's not going to block you with a whole lot of effort or power. And right there, he runs through the block of Omari Thompson and almost creates a safety situation. But an excellent play in the open field by Matt Brooks taking on the block and then making the tackle. Third and 26 from the five. Two receivers right, one left. They'll keep it on the ground. Michael Wallace moves it out to the 11-yard line. And Army will be forced to punt. I'll tell you what, if I'm Navy, I go after this punt right here, too. They've got all the momentum. Army McElroy has dropped a snap. They had two punts blocked last game out against UAB. Cover the Gunners, but go after this kick if you're Charlie Weatherby. Billy Hubbard awaits the punt at the 50-yard line. McElroy in the end zone. They didn't get it off. No. Delay a game. And what that's going to do, Vern, is not only is it going to back him up a little bit, it's going to shorten the distance between the long snapper and the punter, which makes it even easier to try to go after it. That's an unhappy Todd Berry. Here's the other reason I go after this one. Even if you get a running into the kicker, it's not going to give him anywhere near a first down. You don't want to rough him, but you can be a little extra aggressive on this particular play. McElroy gets loose, but it'll bounce to 36, and Hubbard will back away. 38-yard punt, nothing on the return. Navy gets it back with 5.07 to go in the first half. It has been all Navy so far. We are in Baltimore, only 30 miles away from Annapolis, site of the U.S. Naval Academy. And that's where the Indian warrior called Tecumseh resides, known as the Lord of Football Games, decked in full war paint before home games and always the Army game. Before games, pennies and left-handed salutes are thrown his way for good luck. They must have thrown a lot of pennies this week. <laughs> Because they have played well and they have a 20 to 7 lead with the ball at the 44 yard line. Pat Haynes, who had not touched the ball in 10 previous games, is in as a running back. The fake to him, the pitch to Reese. And Gene Reese, the sophomore, goes left. Now then, let's get the answer to the Affleck. trivia question. Philadelphia has been host to 75 games. Which city is second? And the answer is New York City. Both the Polo Grounds and Yankee Stadium. 11. Doesn't talk about the Meadowlands. 
Ryan Broadwater back in. Here's Lambert at the 38 yard line. Tackle made by Brian Zickafoos, number 36. Another nice job by Lambert just continuing to spin and fall forward. Looked like he was going to be stopped for no gain and he's able to to get a couple extra yards on the play and that's what you need out of your fullback in this kind of option attack. It's it's just hit it up there straight with a lot of burst and and fight for whatever you can get. Third and four with 3.58 to go first half. Big play for Army right here, Burn. They, they really need a stop. And Navy stops the clock. Timeout called. Charlie Weatherby's team leads by 13. Three fifty remaining first half of this one. And a third down coming up for Ryan Broadwater and Navy. And you mentioned at the start, Vern, one of the guys starting up front for Navy today, Philip Ye. Starting at left guard, a senior out of Mesquite, Texas. He broke his leg in the Boston College game and just came back to practice this week, missed all those games, and you know, as a senior, obviously really wanted to play in this game. They weren't sure if he'd be able to make it or not, but he is playing and playing pretty well up there today for his team. On third down, Bryce McDonald is the uh, setback now. Broadwater with the pitch. Josh Bach, number 43, comes right and appears to be short of the first down. Nice play by Andrew Burke, too. That's a, a small guy out there at corner. He's 5'6", 162 pounds. He's a very good cover guy. And they were a little concerned about how he would tackle running backs in the open field against this option. But that time, a nice, sure tackle short of the first down. Fourth and two, Navy will go, and Malinowski replaces Broadwater at quarterback. Keeps it. Cuts inside left guard. Zach Hurst with a tackle. But it was Philip Ye who was helping out with the block, and we'll see if he got enough for the first down. It appears close. Take a look again now. They're going to run right over the side here. Malinowski just looking for a little crease, somewhere to fall in behind to get the necessary yardage. And they got it. First and ten, and we go down to Dean Blevins. Well, Malinowski comes in on short yardage situations, and I heard earlier Todd correctly talking about him coming in on goal line situations. He's a, a smaller guy. He can get in between the creases, and they consider him a tougher short yardage runner. All right, Dean, 15 Navy, Navy first downs, and they have scored on their last four possessions. Halfback option. Pass. <laughs> and Bach looks downfield where Billy Hubbard was triple teamed. And we go down to Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, I heard you earlier talking about that, yes, this game will be played in Philadelphia for the next two years through 2002, but I found the United States military's athletic director, Rick Greenspan. Is there any truth to what we're hearing about moving it to a possible home-and-home -home type of series? Joe, we're looking at a lot of facilities, and we're looking at a lot of cities. Uh, this is a great classic, and our goal is to uh, put this in a city that uh, respects the game and treats the cadets in, in a proper way. Okay, let's get back to the play. All right, Rick Greenspan, who came to the Military Academy from Illinois State and then brought Todd Berry with him. Here's the pitch left. Reese, he's got some room. First and goal, maybe. Two things on this play. The first is, again, the patience and the poise of Broadwater to stay with it, to stay with it, and pitch at the very last moment. Watch Broadwater hold this ball, come downhill, and at the last moment make the pitch to Reese. And then you've got to have receivers downfield blocking, and they got that on that play. Dominic Bailey, the nice block on the sideline. Actually, Brian Williams with the key block to Spring Reese. 
First and goal with 1.36 to go before the break. Broadwater back in. There's Reese. He gets the pitch. Heads left. Down to three. Tackle is made by Randy Mitchell, number 69. Navy with two timeouts remaining. You know, and it's so obvious here in the first half, but one team is playing downhill, that's Navy, and Army is playing uphill. They've not, you take away the one long run by Michael Wallace, and they have not been able to get much of anything going offensively, and defensively, they've been playing on their he heels the whole first half. Second and goal. Broadwater, oh, he slipped it. He gave the ball off to Bryce McDonald, number 24. 40 seconds to go. And they will use one of their timeouts. That leaves them with one. 35 seconds to go before the break. Maybe threatening to score again. 35 seconds to go before the break. Navy up by 13 with a chance to add to that lead. And take a look at Navy's last four possessions, all resulting in scores and time of possession, a huge key right now for Navy. 21 minutes they've held the ball in the first half compared to eight minutes and 25 seconds for Army. So a dominant first half for Navy and Malinowski back in the ball game now in this goal line situation. See number 79, Hoop Stall, the big right tackle. Another of the seniors. He's a 6'6, 300 pounder. Malinowski is hit and driven down. Nice job by Warren Stewart. Nice quick read by the linebacker, Warren Stewart. You know Malinowski's going to probably keep this. He's not going to take a chance of pitching on the goal line. Good penetration by Stewart. The sophomore out of Tacoma, Washington, to force another play. Navy uses its final timeout. And Todd Berry with a very tiny reaction to that defensive play. Fourth and goal. Todd Berry's thinking about what he's going to tell his team at halftime in the locker room. And again, this is his first Army Navy game, and it's a game unlike any other game that he'll coach in. For Charlie Weatherby, this is he's been around the block in this game a couple times. He lost his first game in the Army Navy series. A couple decisions late in the game down on the goal line that I think he regretted at the end of the year. At the end of that game in 95. Reminder at halftime when we uh, go to the break, the Axe of Halftime Report. We'll go back to New York. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman with scores and news and a year end review. Now, David Hills is going to come on. They're going to go for the field goal. On fourth and goal. And that play by Warren Stewart now even bigger for Army. Something to stop the bleeding to go into locker room with a little bit of a momentum. Hills is two of two, but they've not been things of beauty. This from 19 yards out. Wow, it's blocked. His kicks just kept getting lower and lower. That one didn't get over the line of scrimmage. And what a big stand for Army just before the half. Time. Huge, huge stand. Two of his kicks just kind of squirmed over the goalpost. This one here, this was about hiney high. <laughs> and how high is that? Well, <laughs> you saw it right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> 20 seconds to go. David Hills, two of three now. And Bill's not pleased. It was uh, go high in some circumstances. Uh, Joe Jarena takes a knee, and Army finds something positive toward the end of the first half. But Navy has dominated. Brian Broadwater has led the way as Navy looking for its first win of the year 2000. 
up by 13. And we go down to Jill Arrington, who's with Todd Berry. Coach Barry, you got on the board early, but ever since your team's been making their own mistakes. What are you going to tell your team to eliminate those in the half? Well, this was by far the worst half that we played this year. I, uh, we're going to go back in and settle down a little bit. I think we might have come out a little bit too emotional. We just got to go back in and play discipline football, and right now we're not doing that. It's your first Army-Navy game. How's your first half been? First half hadn't been very good, but I plan on the second half being better. What are you going to do to jumpstart your offense? you got to get something going. Well, we just got to be more consistent right now. You know, we're beating ourselves offensively. We've had some big plays, and all of a sudden we've had some negative plays more because of what we've been doing, and so we've just got to settle down. All right, Coach, good luck to you. Back to you, Vern. All right, Jill, thank you. 20 to 7 at the half. We go back to our New York studios, and Tim Brando, who's standing by with Spencer Tillman. Start of the third, Army-Navy, and let's go down to Dean Blevins. Charlie really couldn't have gone better for you, could it? Well, yeah, if we'd have scored here just before halftime, you know, it's always good to go in with momentum. And, uh, you know, at that point, I felt like they probably regained a little momentum. So we've got to come back out and reestablish that offensively, our ball first. I'm excited about the way our young men are playing. I think they're fighting their tails off. We got 30 minutes to play, a lifetime to remember. And these guys are fired up and excited about playing the second half. Sounds to me like Charlie gave a very emotional halftime oration. <laughs> He's lost his voice. First time they've led this year. Brendan Mullins will kick off. Brazier and Jamal, Rashad Jamal are the deep men. And they await this kickoff at the five. That's Rashad Jamal out of Berkeley, California. Grabs it at the nine, straight up the middle, and knocked down as he gets to the 30-yard line. As Jamal heads to the sideline and Brian Broadwater comes out, uh, how much significance do you place on that goal line stand by Army? Well, I think it was very important. I mean, they did stop the bleeding a little bit. They didn't put any more points up on the board. Now they've got to come out and assert themselves here early in the third quarter. I mean, Charlie mentioned they lost a little bit of momentum, but not a whole lot. They had six possessions in the first half. They scored on four of them, and they never had to punt the football in the first half. So they had a lot of momentum in that first half. Very important now for the Army defense to continue what they have going into the locker room. Lambert gets the give on first down and moves out to the 33 yard line. Let's go uh, to the statistics for the first 30 minutes of play. Halftime stats. These will be overwhelmingly in favor of Navy. Yeah, look at the time of possession. Third down, that's a big reason why you can possess the football, not a single conversion for Army. And our Navy ran twice as many plays in the first half 47 plays to 23 in that first half. Second down and six. 95 yards rushing for Army, 65 on one play. Michael Wallace's touchdown run. Broadwater pitches back. Bach. And there is McNally, Derek McNally, the senior out of Los Angeles, actually out of Beverly Hills, California. Derek McNally, one of twins. And a flag is down. Looks like this might be against Navy. During the run on the running team, 10 yards, spot of the foul. Repeat the down. Only the second penalty against Navy in the ball game. Army was penalized seven times in that first half. If you take a look, that has not been a strength for them this year. The set a school record, 76 penalties. They broke their record from a year before with 71 penalties back in 99. Second down, 11. Chandler Sims breaks out wide to the left. Brian Williams wide right. And Bryce McDonald is the running back. And Broadwater keeps it after the fake to the 30 yard line. He picked up two. Nice, nice play by Zach Hurst that time for the Military Academy. It's been a little bit quiet here in this game. He's primarily their best pass rusher, and maybe not throwing the ball as much as they are running the option. But that time, Hurst able to get into the backfield and make a nice play. Cora Cadets came down by bus for this game from West Point, about a 300-mile trip. 
And the football team did as well, got down here yesterday. Here's Broadwater going right. Chandler Sims with a catch. And out of bounds at the 38 yard line. That is a far cry from how the team, the core came down for that game in 1944. Because of wartime security precautions, they put all the cadets on a troop ship, the USS Uruguay. And they came down the Hudson, crept along the coast of the Atlantic in the Chesapeake Bay, and we're here 3,000 strong. Naval Academy had it a little easier in 1944. They just sailed up to Chesapeake Bay and said, we're home. That game, one of two previously played here in Baltimore. They had 70,000 fans mm. December 2nd, 1944. There's the stretch just short. Army versus Navy, what a significant game. One versus two. President Roosevelt, as Jill said at the beginning of the game, announced that the game would be held here only two weeks before. Look, number three, tickets were sold as part of the sixth war bond drive, and look at the amount raised. Now, most of those seats for the game went for a $25 war bond you got in, but there were six or 15 six-person suites. Mm that were sold to corporations for $1 million each. Those are $1944. And a precursor to the uh, luxury suites we've right. seen in this stadium today. There's the punt, they come after it. Calvin Smith just did miss it. And it takes a Navy roll, wow. You know, this was a good decision by Charlie Weatherby. There was a little bit of a groan from the Navy fans wanting him to go for it on that fourth and short. But your defense has played better than they've played all year, and you punt the football, and now Army starts deep in their own territory. Good decision by Charlie. Following the first Navy putt of the game, Army takes over with a first down at their own seven-yard line. Joe Girino with the tough first half, only three of 12, and he missed his last five passes. Hands it off to Michael Wallace, the senior out of San Antonio. Wallace, who accounted for the only Army touchdown, a 65-yard run, and gets a couple. Coming up tomorrow, the NFL Today at 12 noon Eastern time. The NFL Today, followed by a doubleheader, CBS covers the National Football League. Second down and eight. Wallace, stiff arm, breaks one tackle and is out across the 15 to the 16. Chris Lepore, number 26, makes the tackle. And a reminder tomorrow, the NASDAQ.com halftime report with Jim, Mike, and Randy scores and highlights. Well, we mentioned that Army failed to convert any third downs in that first half. 0 for 4. This is a big time conversion here, third and one. And with a guy like Michael Wallace already well over 100 yards, give him the football. And he gets it, comes left, puts his shoulder down, breaks a tackle. First down, Army at the 21. Marcus Jackson makes this up. You know, one of the things that is an advantage for Army in the last several years. A lead like this would be very difficult to overcome running the wishbone, but with a more balanced open attack, they're not out of this game by any stretch. You see the strength of Wallace running through the tackle of Chris Lepore. Again, Lepore, probably the best player on this Navy defense, going on to play in the Hula Bowl and the Gridiron Classic this year, but Michael Wallace, a good tough run. First down and 10, Dodson the tight end, tight right. And off goes to Josh Holden. He circles outside and struggles for yardage out to the 40-yard line. Well, let's go down to the sidelines on the Navy side of the field, and here's Dean Blevins. Well, I'm with Admiral Stansfield and you know, Stansfield Turner, excuse me. <laughs> we were talking about his CIA days, and I got real nervous is what the problem was there. You were a, a player on the 1944 uh, Navy team, and that was such a special game, wasn't it? It was a very special game because the war was on. 
And as we left the locker room to come out on the field, Fleet Admiral Nimitz came into the locker room and said, they're going to be surfacing submarines in the Pacific to get an antenna up to listen to this game. That's at the risk of their lives. You guys go out and win. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't, but uh, it was a great game. It was a different kind of game than this today because we played more smash mouth, uh, hard football where you just drove it yeah. yard by yard. Right. Not this big open game and a lot of passing that we have today. All righty, Admiral, thank you so much, and right. it's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. And among those who were in the stands that day was former President Jimmy Carter, who was a midshipman. And here's Army rushing for the first down. Wallace gets it. And among Admiral Turner's teammates, Ben Martin, who later became the head coach at the Air Force Academy. That covers things on the Navy side. Mm. Not really. Uh, just some great names associated with that game. Don Whitmire, who later became a naval admiral, was the key of the Navy effort, but he went out with an injury early in the second quarter. And many think that Army's ultimate victory was uh, in part due to his absence. Wasn't he nicknamed The Rock? That was the one. <laughs> Said he had no neck. <laughs> oh, here it's holding coming left. Nice run. This guy's got some wheels now. I and mean, he's been a nice little uh, change up for Michael Wallace. Let's go back and take one more look at that uh, 1944 game. Moved to Municipal Stadium from Annapolis. Leading 9 to 7 in the fourth quarter, Doc Blanchard gave Army a 16 to 7 lead. And then Glenn Davis scored on a 50 yard touchdown on a play dubbed the California Special. Army clinched the national title 23 to 7 before a crowd of 70,000. Josh Holden, the sophomore, fumble. Navy. Yeah. A tough break for Army, moving the football out of their own end zone. A nice drive going. And Josh Holden, who has been a nice changeup for Michael Wallace this time, gets stripped of the football. The ball comes out, and I think it's Lapore who's going to get on it. Michael Wagoner is the guy who knocked it out, number 90. He's the guy who gets the strip. And then Lapore, along with Matt Brooks, cover up the football for the midshipman. Chris Lapore has a fumble recovery to go with his previous interception. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Blockbuster. Salomon Smith Barney. PSI Net. And by Suzuki. What a splendid part of the spectacle that was. The march in at exactly 9.43 this morning. The cadets came first, the midshipmen second. First down and 10, Navy. Malinowski in at quarterback. And he comes right. Nice defensive play. Randy Mitchell of the cadets. You know, Vern, you mentioned Chris Lepore on that turnover, and this is kind of an amazing statistic. They have had 15 forced turnovers this year. This guy is responsible for eight of them. Five interceptions, three fumble recoveries, Leading the team in tackles, 105 tackles coming into the game today. Played high school football up in my neck of the woods, at St. Edwards High School up in the Cleveland area in Ohio. Second down and 10, Broadwater is back in at quarterback. Reese is the pitch man. Broadwater will keep it, and again, a fine defensive effort by Army. Much better job stringing out the option here to start the second half. Second defensive possession for Army and attacking the option on defense a little bit better. Again, you've got to stop this first, then the quarterback, and then the pitch. As the sky cam shows us, nice job by the Army defense stopping the run to the fullback and then stringing out the quarterback and the pitch man. Third and nine, maybe. 8.45 to go, third quarter. Broadwater comes right. Chandler Sims, the intended receiver. Nice play by Andrew Burke. Incomplete. Got there right as the football did and knocked the ball loose. 
Sims was open, but watch the quick break on the ball by Andrew Burke, and he's there to create the incompletion. And then a little woof at the end. Having not punted at all in the first half, Brian Williams comes on for the second time. <laughs> oh, goodness. And this one is away. Chases Amari Thompson way back to the 10. Grabs it. Amari Thompson, no chance for a big return there. He's got two returns for touchdowns this season for Army, but a nice kick by Brian Williams of 52 yards. That was a great punt by Brian Williams because not only was it 52 yards, but it pinned Omari Thompson right on the sidelines. He had nowhere to go with the football, and they start again deep in their own territory. I'm Navy Captain Bill Shepard, commander of the first expedition on Space Station Alpha. I'm joined by my two crewmates, Sergei Krikalov and Colonel Yuri Gidzenko of the Russian Air Force, and I'd just like to pass along that the word on Space Station today is Beat Army. That's terrific. <laughs> that, that is just great. 8.29 to go, third quarter. Joe Jarena, the senior from Del Rico, Florida. Hand off to Michael Wallace. Michael Wallace out to the 19-yard line. Tackle made by Eddie Carthon. Now Todd Berry in his first season at Army. His dad, Reuben, was one of the coaching influences that he cited to us. And John Cooper, a big part of his coaching career. Yeah, John Cooper uh, played there and worked for him. And this guy here, Johnny Majors, one of his mentors, is actually here today at the game supporting Todd Berry. Steve Logan, fine coach at East Carolina, real innovator. And Pat Jones, a friend of all of ours. There's the pass from Jarena, woefully short. He was under some pressure. And let's go down to uh, Jill Arrington for more on the story. Well, one time when Todd was watching football with his father, they were watching the Army-Navy game, and Todd kept thinking that the dad was going to turn the channel to watch the University of Oklahoma play, but the dad never did. And when he asked, he said, Dad, don't you want to watch Oklahoma? He said, no, son, I want you to see this game because this is what the game's supposed to be like. It's not about wins and losses. It's about the purity of the game itself. This is the ultimate teamwork and passion for the game of football. His father, Ruben, passed away a couple of years ago. That was a very fine coach. There's Jarena's pass, and it's high, but it's caught. Boy, he's laying out his receivers time and time again. This is Eris Como, the sophomore from, ironically, Tulsa, Oklahoma, near where Todd Berry grew up. This was great concentration by Como. I thought they could have called interference because I thought the contact was made before the ball got to Como. Watch his concentration on the late throw to make the catch as he's being hit. That's an excellent job of concentrating on the football by Eris Como. 12th catch of the year. Still got to get the ball to Omari Thompson. He has only one catch in the ball game. Jarena fakes and rolls out under pressure. And it is dropped by Anthony Miller, number 88. At the end of the play. Again, cold day, hard football, slick football. And Joe Jarena knows that was a chance to, to get a decent play on first down. They've got to throw it enough to, to mix it up to take a little pressure off of Michael Wallace. Second down, Wallace. Couple of yards. Ben Matthews. The ball ended up on the ground. They called it down. Navy thought they had a fumble recovery, but they ruled him down. You see Michael Wallace's numbers, 144 yards, his sixth game now of the season, over 100 yards for a team that was only one victory to lead the conference, a good conference, Conference USA in rushing, and to, to gain the yards he did, pretty impressive. Third and nine. Jarena, pressure. Brad Wimsat, number 94. Again, got to him. 
Well, Jarena gets the incompletion, but the protection has to hold up a little bit better than this. It's five blocking on four, and Wimps it just with a, a huge play right in there, a nice rip move on Jared Churchill to get to the quarterback. That brings on Dan McElroy again, and Billy Hubbard back at the 30-yard line. High, not terribly far, and Hubbard bobbles. He dropped it. The catch, there's a muff, and Navy recovers. Yeah, Brad Wimpson, one of the seniors playing in this game, and he talked about the rivalry between these two academies. The Army-Navy game is just it's pure fun. You know, it's like, uh, it's like uh, playing in the backyard with your, your little brothers, playing pickup football when you're younger. And, you know, it's just uh, the camaraderie and the, uh, the, the common respect you have for the, the, your opponent. Um, and it's just uh, l last year was I just had so much fun. And, you know, I'd, I really didn't go in the game net uh, nervous or uh, you know, I didn't have any pressures on me. I just, I just had a blast. And uh, that's what it's all about. And that's what I, you know, that's why I play this game. That's what I love about this game. On the offense, a little yards. motion penalty Flip on it. the Naval Academy. As you look at the specifics on Wimsett, you know, I don't know that there are any players in all of college football anywhere that enjoy playing the game of football, just the pure aspect of playing the game as much as the guys on these two teams. It is such a thrill for them to play football, and they play it because they love it. They're, they're not, you know, thinking about the NFL or a future in football. They play right now because they love it. Broadwater comes right to Brian Williams, the senior. And uh, the catch is made. You know, not only do they love playing in the games, these guys love to practice. You know, most, <laughs> right. most college football players dread going to practice, but these guys, their schedules are so intense from the time they wake up in the morning to the time they go to bed, when they get three hours to go to practice and meetings, that's like recess for them. I mean, they enjoy it. Second down and nine. Broadwater heading left. He'll keep it. Now he pitches. Reese has it. Beautiful play by Broadwater. And Reese, the trailer, a 19 yard gain. Again, the patience by Broadwater, the poise to carry this out to the very end. Watch Broadwater, the quarterback, take this all the way to the last moment before he pitches. Now he's awful close to this being a forward lateral, but right there, as they're closing in, pitches the football out to Reese. That's just great patience to wait on that play. And off goes to Raheem Lambert, number 32. And he gets one. 5.17 to go. And Curtis Zervik warming up. He has started one game for Army this year. Chad Jenkins is the uh, listed as the second quarterback, but this is. He's the thrower. Zervik is the pure thrower. And right now, Todd Berry saying, we are too far behind to play our normal run game. We've got to throw the football, maybe. And Zervik is the guy to do that. Second and nine, maybe. 4.48 to go, third quarter. Broadwater, Reese to the 35-yard line. Jason Frazier with the tackle. Well, we talked about the kind of regimen these uh, young men keep. Look at this is Brian Williams' average daily schedule. It begins with treatment in the training room at 6.15. And you can see class from 7.55, lunch at 11.45, class again then practice weights dinner and then study hall average about four hours a night now, there is no uh, ish in the military academy either there is no breakfast around seven ish <laughs> i mean everything is specific <laughs> 655 745 broadwater to the 31 yard line yeah <laughs> Our schedule is a little more haphazard. <laughs> 425 ago. I never, uh, Roger and Marianne Staubach are here watching the game today. And one of the great things in my life was that I got to do play by play of the Dallas Cowboys when Roger was the starting quarterback there in the 70s. And I remember in the middle of the 70s, this great rivalry with the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys. And I said to Roger at one point, isn't this terrific? And he said, it's nothing compared to Army Navy. Mm -hmm. 
He was up leading the cheers last night at the Navy Gala, the Army Navy Gala that we attended. 48-yard field goal attempt now. Clock ran out. It's a fake, and they try and toss it deep, but the clock expired. Charlie Weatherby going for the fake, but they did not get the playoff in time. So now not only do they have to do it again, but they've given away their uh, fake. You can see the play clock is down to zero right there. think they'll try a field goal from this distance. Now I would expect a punt, and that's exactly what Charlie Weatherby deciding to do. Was going to gamble on the fake, and they let the cat out of the bag. Brian Williams on the punt for the third time. Amari Thompson at the 10. And that's nice. how about that. Great work. Mike Waddell, the senior cornerback on special teams, down and under, and the ball is stopped inside the one. What he does, he does such a nice job, he gets his back to the goal line so he can look back and find the football and then react to it. Great hustle to get down in that position and then find the football. He knows where the goal line is. That's just excellent special teams work, and he's been doing that all year for Navy. And a new quarterback in for Army. It is Curtis Zervik, the junior from Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Fumble. Oh, fumble. Return for a touchdown. Brad Wimson. One of these days, Brad Wimson is going to be a Marine Corps aviator. And he has just made the memory of a lifetime. Well, a tough place to try to run the football out of your own one. Wallace tries to cut back and then just loses the football. The ball is stripped by Giselle and Wimson with the recovery and the touchdown. Extra point up and good. Three twenty two to go third quarter. Time now for the Exxon scoring recap. Let's see how we got here. Michael Wallace with the first touchdown 65 yards out. David Hills a couple of field goals. Broadwater with a 45 yard run. A touchdown catch by Brian Williams. Another field goal by Hills from 32 yards away. And then just moments ago, Wimson. After Chiselle's initial contact, Navy touchdown, they're up by 20. You know, we talked talk to Charlie Weatherby early in the week. He said every year that he's been involved in this game, which this is his sixth, whoever has won the turnover battle has won the football game. And right now, Army, three turnovers, Navy, just one. DJ Stancil is the deep man. Fakes the reverse and keeps coming. And he's got some room. He's got a blocker out to help him. Stancil, one more block. There are no flags. Mark Giorgi saved the touchdown, but D. Jay Stancil. You don't think that Omari Thompson draws a crowd and draws some attention? They faked the reverse to Omari Thompson, and that left Stancil with a lot of room. Eris Como, number 26, going to get a good block, and then just good open field running. But the fake of the reverse really opened this seam up, and Army in great position. Zervik, the quarterback, will throw on first down. Pumps, good downfield coverage. Now fires it intercepted. Picked off by Ben Matthews, number 50. The fourth Army turnover. Here's a freshman from Pittsburgh. Well, Zervik 
stared that one down, Vern. He went the throw on time. It was not there, and he probably should have run the football. He was debating whether to run it or try to make a throw, but watch the timing get disrupted. Now, right now, Zervik wants to throw it. It's not there. And right here, either throw it away or run. And Ben Matthews, watching the quarterback the whole way, gets the fourth turnover for the midshipman. First and 10, maybe. And off to Raheem Lambert. Now you can't stress turnovers enough. Coming into the game, only 11 turnovers Navy has forced. Four now in the ball game against Todd Berry's team. Hard to win, hard to sustain things when you don't protect the football. Second down and nine. Encouragement offered by the cadets. Second down. You know what? They called it an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. You're right. He was behind the line of scrimmage. B.J. Wiley closest. I will say this. I think Army is playing the option much better in the second half than they did at any point in the first half. They're stringing it out. They're making the quarterback, Rodwater, get a little deeper. And right there, they called it an incomplete pass. This was close. And again, when you string that option out that far, it gets close to that position of forward or backwards. But good job of the Army defense forcing the issue wide. See the totals for Broadwater thus far in the game. It's third and nine. Lambert, the fullback, gets the handoff and will be stopped far short of the first down. So Brian Williams will come on to punt again. Warren Stewart with the tackle. That's a nice defensive series for Army. I mean, their backs are against the wall. They're down by 20 points. Their offense just turned it over. And yet they come and get a three and out. That, that's good defensive football by Dennis Thorell's defense. Brian Williams. They got it. Blocked. It is blocked. Picked up and into the end zone. Touchdown, Army. Ben Woodruff. Calvin Smith got the block, Vern. Ben Woodruff gets the touchdown, but Calvin Smith, the fastest player on the Army team, a wide receiver, is the guy who got his hands on the football. Boy, it couldn't come at a better time for Todd Berry's team. He's going to get the touchdown, but Calvin Smith from the outside, number eight, is going to get the block. Great extension. And then Woodruff alertly picks up the football and gets carried into the end zone. Now the extra point attempt. Got it. Here's what it looks like from the punter's point of view. Just a nice, quick start by Calvin Smith off the corner to get the block. The offense can't get in the end zone. Leave it to the special teams. And a huge play for Army. Ben Woodruff after Calvin Smith's block. And Army, second touchdown of the day. The celebration continues for the Corps of Cadets Monday on CBS, we remind you. When the King of Queens poses for a pinup calendar, well, be happy the year is ending soon. Kevin James stars in an all-new King of Queens Monday on CBS. Get the idea this game means something. Just a bit. <laughs> Mullins will kick off. Mullins will kick off, and Rashad Jamal. I like I like this uh, scatter kick formation. Yeah. Try to confuse the blocking assignments. Now we're set. 
Jamal grabs it at the nine. Nice special team play by Army. That was made by Brent Dial, number 21. One fifteen to go, third quarter, first and ten. Rockwater being chased and caught and dropped. Melvin Criddle, number ninety one. Melvin Criddle, known more as a run defender than he is a pass rusher. Take a look at him right here, though. He's going to get a nice push into the backfield. Stays with it. Good arm under move. And the big fella gets a sack. Senior out of Ellenwood, Georgia. Engineering management major. Second and 13 after the loss of three. Broadwater quarterback draw. Nice run. That will leave about five yards. We'll see where the spot comes. It's a big third down play right here, Vern, because momentum starting to shift a little bit to the Black Knights. A, a key third down play right now for Brian Broadwater. It looks like he's going to let the clock go out and make this the first play of the fourth quarter. But an important play in this ball game. It will be third and three, Navy. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. 27-14, we'll return to PSI Net Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. If you are a Navy man, beware. Army's creeping back into this one. We begin the final quarter, 27-14. Key play, third and three, Navy. Protecting a 13-point lead. Broadwater, the quarterback, fires it out, right side, caught. Clutch. First down, Navy. Clutch play. Dominic Bailey, number 83, sophomore from Houston. Big play for Brian Broadwater. Again, momentum, such a huge part of this game. And the, the many swings of momentum. Army trying to seize it back at Broadwater with the key throw on third down. First and ten, second play of the fourth quarter. Handed to the fullback, Bryce McDonald, the sophomore from Springfield, Missouri, number 24. And he makes the uh, carry out to the 42-yard line. 27-14, second down and five. Navy up by 13. Broadwater comes, thinks about the pitch, doesn't. Another nice defensive play by Army. Todd pointing out that they've defended the option much better. But uh, that was a key third down play. Yeah, it really was. Broadwater made the plays, made a lot of good plays today. And I think one of the biggest keys for Navy, Vern, in the ballgame, their ability to run the football on Army's defense. This team was the leading rushing team in the country last year, but struggled this year. Only 166 yards per game coming into today. 283 yards on the ground so far in the game against Army. So their ability to run the football, particularly with the option, a big reason why they have the lead right now. And another big third down play, this one, Leaves a need of six. Broadwater fires right side, incomplete. Another and nice play by Andrew Burke, the little guy out there. 5'6", 162 pounds senior out of Plantation, Florida. Here he is right here, ISO'd one on one. You know they have to throw. Gets a little, gets away the little grab of the jersey, but still able to get the hand in there and knock the ball away. That brings on Brian Williams, number 81. 
And Amari Thompson, number three, is deep. Hasn't had much of a chance to return one today. This is returnable. Line drive. Thompson grabs it at the 20. Good downfield coverage. Jeff Gaddy, who is a special team star for Navy, number 40, down to make the stop. Army gets it back, but they trail by 13. I can't believe we stole the Army mule. Hey, it's getting real nervous. Settle down, boy. Settle down. Look out, he's getting away. Oh, no. They are not going to be happy about this. Thirteen oh seven to go. Twenty seven fourteen. Navy leads. Looking for their first victory of the year two thousand. Todd Bear has given way to Curtis Zerbic. He flips it out. DJ Stanson number forty two. Good defense. Tackle is made at the 25-yard line. Today's Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete Award goes to Brandon Purdue of Army. Rigid Tools' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Army's General Scholarship Fund. Brandon Purdue. I don't think the equipment managers on either one of these teams have to spend a lot of money on hair products for the <laughs> locker room. A lot of closely shaven guys. <laughs> Second down, 11. Zervik with time, fires it out. Caught at the 29-yard line by the tight end, Clint Dodson. Tackle made by Ben Matthews. Well, here's a young man who did not play last year. Yeah, he was a manager on the lacrosse team last year. He came here and played football two years ago, but was not an option guy. Was a throwing quarterback out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois, and kind of got disenchanted with the football and went to be the manager on the lacrosse team. And when Todd Berry came here, he decided to come back out for football. Berry actually recruited him at Illinois State. Third down again. Army, Zervik. I don't think the catch is ruled legal. Brian Bruinton. Charlie doesn't think it was a good catch, but there appear to be marking it like it was a catch. Here's yeah. Bruinton, the intended receiver. That's a good catch. The ball did come out, but the ruling was his knee was down after the catch, and the only thing Bruinton didn't do was get enough for the first down. That leaves a fourth and two. So McElroy is on to punt, and Billy Hubbard for Navy waits for it at the 25-yard line. 10.58 to go in the ball game. Hubbard down immediately. Anthony Miller, number 88, 32 yard punt and nothing on the return. 10 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the 101st renewal of this ancient rivalry. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Exxon. Jet Print Photo Paper, Budweiser, and by AXA Advisors. That's Bancroft Hall in Annapolis at the Yard, largest dormitory in the world. It houses every one of the midshipmen at the Naval Academy. 10.45 to go in the fourth quarter. First and 10, Navy. Broadwater wants to go deep in double coverage, and it is knocked away incomplete at the 38-yard line. Derek McNally was defending, and we go down to Dean Blevins. 
Well, I've got a 38-year-old mayor here, Martin O'Malley, Irishman who leads a rock band, a singer. We want to know, though, about Baltimore's chances of having this game regularly or maybe once every four years. I would love to see that happen. I tell you, the people of our city have done such a great job for the Army-Navy game this year. This is a proud day for Army-Navy, but it's a proud day for our city. The Inner Harbor was turned into a variable Armed Forces theme park, and then the march onto the field. I think we have a great shot for the future, a great shot for getting the Olympics in 2012, too. I right, thank you, Dean, and thank you, Mary O'Malley. There was a turnover. A flag is also down. Brian Zickfus looked like he got the recovery. It was against Navy, and it is declined. And a huge turnover for Army. The turnovers have hurt them for most of this ball game. The penalty was an illegal motion. You see Lambert started early. That's where the penalty was. Then he fumbled the football. Not a clean exchange, and Zikapoos comes up with the football. Watch right here, the exchange between Broadwater and Lambert, not clean, and Zikapoos there to fall on the football. Brian Zikapoos, the leading tackler for Army over the season. First down and 10 cadets. Zernick nice it off. Wallace. Inside the 20. Burton, this is the Statue of Liberty play. It this is. is the play everybody uses in their backyard. Wimson said this is like pick up football with your brothers. Well, this is the Statue of Liberty play from the backyard. Watch Zerbic fake the pass and then just lay it out there for Michael Wallace. Nice block leading out there by Paul Henderson and a good play in the red zone for Army. Omari Thompson goes wide left. Como is wide right. First and ten after the Wallace run. They toss it to Wallace, or DJ Stancil rather. And he is dropped for a loss to the 22-yard line by Michael Wagner, number 90. Stancil had the big play on the kickoff return, faking a reverse. That time, the Navy oh. defense not fooled. Loss of five, second and 15. Part of the reason I think that Todd Berry has gone with Zervik is because coming into the game, Army averaged 179 yards a game passing, only 55 yards in the ball game so far. Zervik back, flips it out left side, caught by Wallace. And Ben Matthews is there. He fumbled the football. And it uh, is recovered or goes out of no, bounds. Yeah, it landed on the out of bounds line. Michael Wallace a little careless with the football here in the second half. Ben Matthews is the guy who's going to make the tackle and knock the football out. And you see it laying on the ground there, but Jake Bowen unable to recover it in the field of play. Reminder coming next. We tip off our coverage of NCAA College Basketball, Kentucky at North Carolina. That follows the completion of this game. Third and 15. Knocked away. Incomplete. Intended for Dotson. Eric Severson, number 93, there for Navy. Well, the only thing about that is, is even if it's completed, it's completed for about a three-yard game. This is a zone blitz by Navy. They're going to bring pressure right here and then watch the defensive end drop back into coverage and get a hand on the football. A nice play by Eric Severson faking the rush, dropping right into the throwing lane and bringing up a fourth down and long situation. Army will go on fourth and 15. Zervik back. Goes into the corner left side. Bruinton touchdown. Brian Bruinton the junior. Army scores on fourth down. is the speed receiver. Bruinton is the tall receiver. 6-2 going against 5-10 Marcus Jackson. He just bodies him up, gets in position, and Zervik comes through with a big throw for the Black Knights. Brendan Mullen with a very significant extra point. It is good.
Todd Berry, seemingly placid by that, but he's in turmoil inside. Just under nine to play, Army has crept back to within six. And they get the big touchdown toss. Brian Bruinton's first career catch for a touchdown for Army. A six-point Navy lead. And the ball falls off the tee. You don't think these guys like playing in this game? This is great. Just great. Reminiscent of a cubby of quail. Touchdown, let's go, get it up. Touchdown, come on. Brendan Mullen will kick it off. Jamal has it at the 13. He was popped at the 27-yard line. Jason Milton. Let's go back and take a look at the Zervik throw to Bruinton. We'll take a look at it from the sky cam. A perfect throw on the fade route to a big receiver. Now, Zervik came off the bench against Memphis early in the season, went 28 of 38 for 246 yards. He threw three interceptions, though, and no touchdowns, but today, He's overcome the one interception, and he's gone five for six, and that one a huge touchdown to put Army right back in it. Well, give it to the fullback, Raheem Lambert, and Patty Heidegger is there, number 96, with the tackle. Got the cadet corps stirred up. Charlie Weatherby told us also one of the things he's learned about being in this game is you've got to be able to deal with the changes of emotion and momentum in this game. They had the momentum the whole first half. Right now, the guys in gray and the gals in gray are cheering the loudest. Second and nine. Broadwater goes right, flag is down. He spins and is tackled at the 36-yard line. Patty Heidegger with the back-to-back -back tackles, and we'll check the nature of the flag. Get in motion on the offense. Now time now for the Army and Navy Heritage. Remember Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard, back-to-back -back Heisman winners? And the third Heisman winner for the Military Academy, Pete Dawkins. Navy has had two in its history. Joe Bellino, now living in Boston, and Roger Staubach won the Heisman in 1963. As we mentioned earlier, Roger and his wife, Mary Ann, are present at the game. He is still much revered by the midshipmen and everybody in the United States Navy. Second down. Broadwater. Incomplete. You know, I'd say if anybody has an edge right now, it would have to be Army because they're used to being in close games in the fourth quarter. Now, they haven't won many of those games in the fourth quarter. The only win that they had came against Tulane but you see what they've done in the fourth quarter going into many games right in it not able to hold on at the end but right now they're playing catch up in the fourth quarter but have seized momentum in this football game thanks to their special teams and forcing some turnovers third and 14. Broadwater has it in his hands lets it go near side short though yes the catch is made but it's short at the 38 yard line that will bring up a fourth down Billy Hubbard with the catch and Brent Dial is there to make the tackle Todd Berry Todd said something about let's play safe and the one thing that he talked about too is hey it's one thing to play in close games that's great but you got to learn from it and learn from the losing and learn how to win games in the fourth quarter right now his team in their last game of the season a great chance to do that Brian Williams, nice high deep kick, but fumble! Navy has it! Mike 
Fidel. Omari Thompson. Omari Thompson trying to get in the game, make a play, just loses his concentration. And Riddell there to cover the football. The special teams hero for Navy, another big play. And it all started with the excellent punt by Brian Williams. It was a superb punt. Broadwater hands it off. Pat Haynes, number 25, gets the give. Well, turnover is a big story. Our CBS Sportsline stat of the game last year, Army with four turnovers, five today. And just when it looked like they were turning the corner momentum-wise, another turnover at a crucial time in the football game. Bryce McDonald is the running back, second and nine. Second and eight officially. Here's the pitch. Reese. Good defense. Yes, indeed. Nice job by Lyle Weaver stringing the play out. He doesn't get the tackle, but he forced the play wider and wider for virtually nothing. And let's check in quickly with Dean Blevins. You know, Vern, what made that punt even more impressive is that it was into the wind, probably a 10 to 15 mile an hour swirling wind, but he had a perfect spiral on it. Yes, indeed. That was a 46-yard punt, Dean. Third and eight. Broadwater, quarterback draw. He was keeping all the way, and he gets to the 10-yard line. That will bring up fourth and one. Fourth and one, and remember, Navy has not looked particularly sharp kicking field goals so far. But this one, an apparent chip shot. You called it a quarterback draw all the way. No uh, chance of throwing the football here for Broadwater, just trying to pick his way through the defense and comes up a tad short. Now, what a significant field goal this would be for Navy. David Hills is two of three, but each of them have gotten subsequently lower. Tiny high, I think, is the <laughs> word you used. Had one blocked. With 5.35 to go, 27-yard effort. Perfect. David Hills now three of four. Five minutes, 32 seconds remaining in this one. And Navy up by nine after David Hill's field goal from 27. Squib kick. Taken by Eris Como at the 25-yard line. And Hills has to make the tackle. But he did. He sure did. A good tackle. An important tackle. A heart-stopping tackle. Five minutes and 22 seconds left in the football game. And interesting, Joe Jarena's back yep. in a quarterback. Maybe the move to the senior for his leadership. He's not played well today, but he has played well in his career at times, and he needs to play well now. Bobbles the snap. There's a fumble for Jarena. A scramble for the ball. Who got it? They tried to go with the quick snap. And Jarena recovers it. Marcus Jackson was back there with him. You know, I think this was some kind of a trick play, Vern. They were trying to do something unusual because Jarena was not under center like a normal quarterback would be. And, and Zervik is coming back in the game right now. So this was a one-play trick play. Look, here's Jarena right here. He's not under center. The ball is snapped. I'm not sure what they were trying to do. But Jarena never got a handle on the football. Second down. Zervik back. Goes deep. Omari Thompson. Huge catch at the 49. Wow. They needed 22. They got 21. What a big play on second down. 
Zervik is a tall drink of water for a quarterback. He's 6'4", 195 pounds, can see over that defense and saw right down the field to Omari Thompson. And a nice job by Omari holding on to the football. Third and a very long one. Zervik, well, his receiver stumbled. It's picked up, and here we go. Chris Lepore. They are going to rule it an incomplete catch. No touchdown. It was very close, Vern. Lepore did the right thing. He played it as if it was a lateral and picked it up to return it. The call was made right away. Take a look now. The ball bobbled. Then the question is, was it a forward pass or was it a lateral? And the official right on the line called it a forward pass right away. Chris Lepore with an interception and a fumble recovery already today. And the key thing there was that was a third and short, third and two, and now they've got to make it on fourth and two. Zervik play fake, pressure coming. Fires it out, caught by Dodson. And Dodson gets the first down with a 14-yard gain. Coming into the game, Dodson, the second leading receiver on this team with 35 catches, a big target, 6'3", 240 pounds. The coaches feel he has a chance to maybe play in the NFL when his career is done here and comes up with a huge catch on fourth down. First down and 10. Minder basketball next. Zervik knocked away, incomplete. Clyde Clark, number 33. Tonight on CBS, it's a jolly holly Christmas with Frosty the Snowman, followed by Frosty Returns. And watch your favorite skating superstars burn up the ice in an all-new ice wars. It's USA versus the world from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. That's tonight. Second and ten. Vern, I'm not so sure I don't try to throw the ball deep instead of the, the shorter intermediate routes. Let your guy go up and try to make a play down the field. Zervik feeling a little pressure and it's incomplete. Sailed on him. As Brad Wimsett got there again. He's had a terrific game, number 94. Not only is he there, but he probably could have gotten a holding penalty called on his man. Great spin move and gets held at the end of the play, still able to get to the body of Zervik. Third and ten. Got it. First down, Army at the 22. Brian Bruinton, a gain of 11. Bruinton coming up big here in the fourth quarter. Got the touchdown catch. Now he's out on the outside. Again, six foot two, a nice big target. Gets his numbers to the quarterback, and Zervik delivers. But they've got to move quickly, Burn. Three minutes, 35 seconds, and they've got to score twice. Anthony Miller comes across. Zervik fakes it to him. Nope. Wallace. He's got to get out of bounds. Statue of Liberty again. Yeah, Statue of Liberty, but Michael Wallace needs to get out of bounds. Ben Matthews with the tackle in the clock continues to unravel. See, if you can score quickly, then you don't have to try an onside kick right away. You can kick off and try to make it a three-possession game, stop them on defense. But the more this clock runs now, the more likely they've got to try an onside kick if they score here. Out of the spread, Josh Holden comes in. Zervik controls a high snap. Fires it incomplete. Chris Lepore was back there again. Jake Bowen was also in the neighborhood. It was uh, Bowen who tipped it, as a yeah. matter of fact. Bowen got a hand on the football. Lapore was there behind the play. Zervik a little late on that read, a little late delivering the football, and that allowed Navy to get in position to break on the ball. Third and nine. 
Here's Bruinton right here. He's been the key guy in this fourth quarter. Zervik dances right. He's got a man wide open. Anthony Miller caught touchdown. open for about 10 seconds here. <laughs> it took Zervik a while to find him. Watch Miller just get behind the defense. Everybody's worried about Bruinton right here. And here's Miller all alone, hands up in the air. And finally, Zervik found him and got him the football. First touchdown reception of the season for Anthony Miller. Extra point. Hammered home. Two minutes and 44 seconds left. Army, Navy. Two minutes and 44 seconds remaining in this one. A two-point game. Navy clings to a lead. The Navy expecting onside kick. Army has all three of their timeouts, so they may elect to go ahead and kick this one and see if they can stop it. It's an onsider. It was excellently executed. Who got it? The cadets think they do. Navy disagrees. You don't think there's some fighting underneath the pile here? They may say, touching. didn't go 10 yards. Remember, it has to go 10 yards. So it has to cross right here before an Army player can touch it. Let's see where it goes. Oh, wow. From there, it looks like it was clearly past 10 yards before an Army guy touched the football. Take a look again. Does it inadvertently hit a guy? Does not look like it. Tough to tell. Hmm. First and 10, maybe. Broadwater pitches it back. Bach skips down the sideline and is out of bounds just short of the first down. Joe Jarena, senior quarterback, talked about the nature of this game. The game's never over until the last, you know, horn sounds, you know. Last year we lost 19 and 9. We were still in it all the way up to, you know, our last drive pretty much, you know. We had turnover in our second to last drive that killed our drive but you know we were still in that game the year before you know 34 30 you know, came down right down the you know, wire and maybe you know, had a chance to score on this last drive you know whoever you know is, is staying in it you know at the end and at the end of the game you know we're gonna it's gonna come out right, with a win that last carry by Pat Haynes of Navy and uh, appeared to have given the midship in the first down Army has used one of their timeouts. Vern, it's a two-point game, 30 to 28, but 10 points for Navy scored here in the second half off of Army turnovers. And again, turnovers were the story last year and appear to be the story this year as well. There's Joe Jarena, senior quarterback, Valrico, Florida. Started the game, had a really tough afternoon, gave way to Curtis Zervik in the second half and hoping now that his defensive teammates can stiffen get the ball back and that uh, either he or Hunter will have a chance. Well seven of the ten games won by Army in the 90s but so many of them very very close. See the 92 game one pointer 93 two pointer 94 Two pointer. 95 1, 96 4. They could use me in Florida. I can count. <laughs> we have seven wins in the 90s by Army by a combined 24 points. Joe Jarena's right. It isn't over until it's over. Army used one of its three timeouts. They have two remaining. It's first down and 10. 
middle it goes to Pat Haynes. Here comes another timeout. That's the second, one remaining. And on the clock, two minutes and 21 seconds left. The greatest college sports video library of all time. Introducing the new NCAA.com, the official site of college sports. Second down eight at the 30-yard line. Navy hangs on to a two-point edge with 2.21 to go. Broadwater. This was a keeper all the way. Yep. Followed box block and is tackled by Warren Stewart, number 48. Let's go back and revisit the onside kick, Todd. It, it's been such a great game, Vern, and you hate that an official's call would maybe decide it, but from the angles that we saw, this looked like a bad call. It looked like a perfectly executed onside kick by Army. Waited till the ball got beyond 10 yards, but you see the official dropped his beanbag right there and, and thought there was an, an illegal touch. Third and four, 145 to go. Again, a design keeper by Broadwater and a terrific play. There goes a timeout now by a Derek timeout. McNally, number four. Good defense, final timeout used by Army. A minute 33 left in the ball game. Brian Sikafus completed the play. One minute, 33 seconds left. Army out of timeouts. It's fourth down. David Hills is three of four today, has had one blocked. This from 43 yards out into the wind. Billy Hubbard is the holder. Heath Sanders snaps it back high. The kick is on the way and has no chance. A flag is down. Andrew Burke might have run into the kicker. Boy, oh boy. Wow. Five yards. Running into the kicker on the defense. Five yard penalty. First down. And there you have it. Well, this is a good call. There's no question that there was contact on the kicker. Burke comes in free. He lays out, but he's got to avoid the kicker. It wasn't vicious contact, but there is no such thing as being blocked into the kicker in college football. I give David Hills credit. He was casting his eyes at the referee before he hit the ground. Do I get the call or not? He got it. It's first down, Navy. Today's player of the game presented by Salomon Smith Barney is Brian Broadwater, the senior quarterback, 123 yards rushing, 88 passing, a total in his final game of 211 yards and two touchdowns. Watch next Saturday when Salomon Smith Barney presents the CBS Sports College Football Player of the Year Award Show. Those yards are going to go backwards here for a couple plays running the victory formation, but I'm sure Broadwater doesn't care. What a finish for a guy in his senior year. His team was 0-10 in his final season as a quarterback, but they're going to win his final game as a football player. season.
game. Final score, 30 to 28. For Todd Blackledge, Dean Blevins, and Jill Arrington. I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from PSI Net Stadium in Baltimore. The final score, 30-28, Navy. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.